So let's get started. Um, show slides, can start. Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to share our experience of managing large scale Kafka cluster use a in-house um, build management system we call cruise control here at Linkin. So, okay. So first we have some background on Kafka. So I assume probably everyone knows that Kafka is a quite popular distributed streaming processing platform. So here I list some like highlight feature of Kafka. So first Kafka is a highly scalable pub sub system. So by pub sub system, I mean that uh, in, in order to produce, to send a message to Kafka, you need to have a producer and uh, you need to have a topic. So producer will produce the topic, produce the record to the topic, and then you will have a consumer subscribe to the topic to get the message. And uh, it is uh, highly scalable in the sense that the Kafka cluster is able to scale out. You can get, um, you can get more uh, capacity by just bringing more broker, bringing more hardware into your Kafka cluster. The second feature is uh, um, high throughput and low, low latency. So I think this is uh, mainly comes from some clever like uh, design choice made by Kafka. So we have like say, we have the batch processing and uh, we also like have a very clever usage of the pitch cache of the hardware so that we get a pretty good uh, performance uh, at broker side. And the third one is durability and the fault tolerance. So Kafka broker like will persist all the message sent to broker into a durable storage so, so that the data, there is no data loss. And uh, in addition, we, all the data sent to Kafka is like, if you, if you are in a normal configuration, it will be like, replicated to several copies and uh, just stored on different brokers. So if there is like one broker die, you still get no data loss and your availability is not get affected. So I think all this like good feature and uh, plus Kafka's uh, simple and uh, powerful data model, basically it is uh, what it provides is uh, order the stream of record. So this simple, dat simple data model makes Kafka a very good choice for a lot of application production. Uh, what do we see here inside the linking? Um, the application includes, uh, like say, streaming processing. So um, Kafka is used closely with our streaming processing engine, Samza, which is used as a backbone in our near nine processing platform. Also, uh, it is used in application to application messaging, meaning like, like, like two microservices wants to talk and uh, Broker uh, and the Kafka is in between to decouple the microservice. Also for logging purpose and uh, let's say database replication. And there are many other applications. Okay, so uh, I also want to like discuss some of the key concept inside Kafka so we can like better understand what cruise control is doing. So inside Kafka, the the records, the messages is like organized under topic. So topic you can think of as a ordered stream of messages. And the under topic, it has multiple partitions. So partition is mainly for scalability concerns. So one topic have have multiple partition. Each of these partition is hosted by different broker, as you can see on the graph um, at the right of the this, this slide. So so different partition is hosted by different broker and the producer and consumer can produce to and consume from multiple partition at the same time. So in this way, we are able to like improve our throughput. So under partition, under each partition, there is a concept called a replica. So replica is mainly for fault tolerant concern. So each partition will have one leader replica and a multiple follower replica. So leader replica is the one which really serves the client traffic. And the follower replica is just to try to keep in sync with the leader replica. So in case that the, the leader replica's broker is died, and the, then one of the follower replica can be promoted as a leader replica. In this way, we are not, uh, so the user can still like produce and consume. We are not uh, harm our 
uh, availability and uh, there will be no data loss. Okay, so with this like uh, background uh, knowledge, so let's see the operation challenging for Kafka, especially if you are running Kafka at a very large scale, like we do at Linkin. So, so our current uh, uh, Kafka deployment at Linkin, we have like over 2.6K broker, we have over 44K um, topic and uh, 5 million partition and uh, over 4 trillion message per day. So I believe that this data is like a couple of months back data. So I, I believe nowadays we have like even higher numbers. So running at this scale, we have seen like management the Kafka cluster become a big headache for us. So, so some things we observe is like, first, let's say the hardware failure is almost every day. So basically hardware, hardware failure includes like um, broker dies and let's say disk fail, this kind of stuff. So it's pretty common. And uh, another thing is that uh, load skew are normal. So basically, uh, because the way the, the broker is hosting multiple topics and multiple partitions, but some partition has larger data volume than other partitions. So as a result, like some broker is more heavy loaded than other brokers. So the load is good. And uh, this is not a, like a good state for Kafka cluster. The third thing is the uh, admin operation. Uh, for example, like add a broker, add some broker to the cluster to expand capacity or remove some broker. Basically, you want to decommission some broker or you want to rebalance the replicas across the whole cluster. If you do it manually, then you need to like deal with like Zookeeper to like manually read right to the ZK node, which is tedious and error prone if it's do, done by human. So because of all this like um, like this headache and this like hard problems, so we design we decided to design a management system for Kafka cluster. So we designed cruise control. So um, basically, in my opinion, what cruise control provides is like three core functionality. The first one is closely monitoring Kafka cluster state, Kafka cluster load for resources. So basically, it has a uh, it closely monitoring the Kafka cluster state for four resources which we are interested in uh, is CPU disk utilization, network inbound, and network outbound. And uh, we also support monitoring the Kafka cluster, which is running on heterogeneous uh, hardwares. This is uh, specifically useful if you are doing a rolling upgrade of your Kafka clusters. So at some some stage you will have like some new hardware and some old hardware running at the same time. And if you want to monitor the system, you need this like uh, heterogeneous broker support. And the, sec the second core functionality is anomaly detection and self healing. So cruise control is able to detect there is any anomaly uh, in the Kaf current Kafka status, which means uh, if there is any hardware failure or maybe there is some uh, load skew and uh, after the anomaly is detected it is able to automatically trigger some operation and to bring the kafka status kafka cluster kafka cluster status back to a healthy state and the third one is uh, admin operation so with cruise control the admin the admin operation i like described in previous slide uh, will be very simple. So basically it's just one command thing. So you just send a HTTP command to uh, cruise control. Let's say to specify like what is a, like for example, for add broker, what is a broker you want to add to the cluster? Cruise control will do the rest of things for you. Basically it will, uh, uh, it will move some um, replicas to this newly added broker and to balance the, the whole cluster. Okay, so now let's look at the cruise control architecture. So this is a very high level graph. So on the right, we have the Kafka cluster we are trying to monitor, we are trying to manage. manage. And uh, on the left, we have cruise control. Here, I, we draw out the 
all the major components inside cruise control. On the left, we see there is a REST API, which is the access point to cruise control for the cruise control user. And uh, it exposes a bunch of get endpoints and uh, post endpoints. So I will like describe in detail later. And uh, in the middle, uh, at the top, we have a monitor, which is like mainly responsible for monitoring the Kafka cluster and to collect metrics. And uh, in the middle, we have the analyzer, which is to generate to generate some proposal to like in order to make the to improve the Kafka cluster status. And, uh, and at the right, we have the anomaly detector, which is to detect anomaly and uh, to do some to take some action based on the detected anomaly. And uh, in the in the bottom, we have the executor, which is the component to execute the proposal generated by analyzer and uh, anomaly detector just to make things happen. Okay, so I will go through like uh, each of these major components one by one. So let's take a deep dive into these major components. So the first one I want to talk about is node manager. So basically what node manager do, it is, it is responsible for building node profile for the, for the cluster over a non-observing period. So how does it achieve this? So if we go back to this graph, we can see uh, inside the Kafka cluster, we have a matrix reporter, which is uh, basically this matrix reporter is running on each broker uh, inside of this Kafka cluster. So this matrix reporter is periodically report metrics into an internal topic, which we call matrix reporter topics. And the monitoring will periodically consume this um, matrix record and uh, to aggregate into a matrix sample for each partition and each broker inside this Kafka cluster. And uh, once we have this sample, we keep this sam we keep like these samples in memory for a configurable time window. And uh, this sample is used to create a cluster model if like it is requested by other components like uh, analyzer and the uh, alumni detector. And uh, another thing I want to like uh, highlight about um, node monitor is that you see there is a there is a orange box called the sample store. Oh, so basically all the orange block block on this graph meaning that it is, it is a pluggable component. So the user of cruise control is like able to customize the behavior of this pluggable component to like uh, add some extra behavior and functionality. So which makes cruise control as a whole is a highly customizable system. So this so go back to this sample store. So what this sample store means is that we try to persist the sample we build in node monitor into our persistent storage. So, and the, the reason we want to do this is totally for backup purpose. So imagine that your cruise control crashes and it can just get restarted. So it can it is able to read the latest sample from this sample storage and uh, to quickly build the in-memory state. So to bring cruise control into a working state quickly. So in our current uh, open source implementation, the sample store is to store the samples in uh, another internal Kafka topic we call the load history topic. Okay. Okay, so the next component I'm going to talk is uh, analyzer. So, what Analyzer does is that first it requests a cluster model from Node Monitor. Then, bring, then based on this cluster model, it tries to generate some proposal, which is able to um, bring the Kafka cluster into a good state. So here we need to define what is good. So we define what is good for a Kafka cluster by defining some good property we want from this cluster. And uh, each of this good property is mapped to a goal inside the uh, analyzer. So let's take an example, the rec awareness. So we want the rec awareness property for Kafka cluster. 
what it means that we want the replicas of the same partition to be hosted on brokers and to be hosted bro on brokers resides on different racks. So this will help us help the fault tolerance. They say if one rack is done, you still do not uh, get like uh, your availability is not get a lot get affected and there is no data loss. So for this rack aware property, we design we write a rack aware go, which just to um, which is just to reflect this property. So this is what Go does. So basically we have two types of Go. One is hard Go and the other is soft Go. So hard Go is that this Go is must, we must satisfy this Go. This Go is must be achieved. Otherwise we say this, this cluster is unable to be optimized and it needs the human intervention. And the soft Go is kind of like a best effort thing. So we try to like achieve this goal, but if we are unable to achieve, it is okay. So we, we think it is acceptable. So here at least some example of hard goal and soft goal here. Like uh, for hard goal, at least the rec aware goals, basically rec awareness goal is what I described. And uh, there is a resource capacity goal. And for soft goal, there is a resource distribution goal and the replica distribution goal. So let's take a resource capacity goal and the replica resource distribution goal as an example. If you look at the graph at the bottom, at the bottom left, it is a resource capacity goal. So what this goal does is that it defines a, a limit. So, so it is a limit of, uh, the limit of resource utilization. So basically we, what, we hear, what we do here is that we say that there is a, for the, for all the resources we are interested in, basically it is CPU, disk, network inbound, and the network outbound. We, we, want, we want that uh, for each of the broker, it is utilization of this four resource do not exceed this limit. So like in this graph, we see the limit at 60%. So we don't want the utilization to exceed the 60% for um, each of these four resource. So this is like one of the resource capacity goal we have. So basically, it's one of the hard goal we have, and on the bottom right, we have the one of the one of the soft goal. Basically, is the resource distribution goal. So what this goal tries to achieve is that we want the utilization of the resource across the cluster is is like a, a more or less balanced. So. What we do is that first we calculate uh, for each of the resource, we calculate the average utilization across all the broker inside the cluster. Then based on this average value, we define a range and we want each broker's utilization of the resource lies in this range. So this is like a soft goal we're trying to achieve. So if you look at the, what uh, another does, basically, is trying to achieve a list of goals, and uh, it is trying to achieve um, from a cluster, and the cluster imposes some like uh, restriction. So it is a multi-objective optimization problem, and uh, this problem is known as a NP-complete problem. So it cannot be like uh, if you want to get the optimal solution, you are unable to get it very fast. So what we do is that inside the analyzer, we design a heuristic algorithm which is able to get the near optimal solution, but in a very fast way, so that we can always like uh, quickly like uh, to do something instead of like waiting for the, uh, waiting for the uh, optimal solution, but uh, after a long time, because the Kafka cluster is like involving dynamically. So once we get the solution, maybe it is already out of date. Yeah, so this is the analyzer. <laughs> Uh, the next one I want to talk about is the uh, executor. So basically what executor does yet is that it takes the proposal generated by, generated by the analyzer and uh, it's translated into some operation and uh, it executes this operation. So um, basically there are two types of operation we are like executing. One is leadership movement. So what the leadership movement is that you, you try to move the leader replica of one partition to one of the follower replica. So leader movement is, is a cheap operation. 
basically it is just a metadata update. There is no real data copy. But uh, at the same time, it is it is the impact is limited. So it's only so out of the four resources we are interested, basically CPU, network in, network out, and the disk, it only impacts the CPU and the network out. Another type of operation is a replica movement. Basically, uh, it it means that you want to move one of the you you want to move the replicas of one partition to uh, to another broker which currently not host any replica of this partition. So this is an expensive operation because it it requires a real data copy, and uh, sometimes like one partition can be very large I mean hold a lot of data so this is which means it is expensive like to copy the data and uh, but the, at the same time it's impact it, it impacts all the hardware resources so it will will like change all the will change the broker utilization of the four resources we are interested in, all four resources we are interested in so this is these are the two types of operation like we trying to generate and another thing I want to like uh, point out is that uh, when we are trying to generate to execute this operation we are generated, we're trying to do it fast. So what we do is that we execute this operation in batch, but we do not want to like do everything at at once uh, at the same time, because we do not want the Kafka broker to spend too many resources just for rebalance purpose. If the broker spend too much resource on rebalance, it will affect the real user traffic. So user will, will see that the performance of broker is degraded. So we don't want that. So, so that's the reason why we like uh, have a design a throttle throttle mechanism here. So basically the, the operation generated by the executor is executed in a throttled con concurrency. So that is uh, the design policy, uh, design principle for executor. Okay, and uh, next one I want to talk about the REST API. So basically, REST is the access point for the user of cruise control to use cruise control. So it it uh, expose a list of get endpoint and the post endpoint, and uh, basically it can do a lot of things. So the get endpoint is the many from monitoring purpose. So let's say the five endpoint I list here, the first three load, partition load, Kafka cluster status. They are all monitoring the Kafka, they, are all, they will all return you some data about the Kafka cluster we are monitoring, but it will return like data of different aspects. Uh, so I will show this like in demo in detail, so what this, this endpoint returns to you. Uh, the state endpoint will return you state of cruise country itself. And the proposal is just to, to tell you that what, uh, if, we are, if we want to rebalance the current, uh, if we want to rebalance the Kafka cluster, what is the uh, analyzer, uh, what is the proposal generated by analyzer will be look like? And uh, for the post endpoint, uh, so, the all the post endpoint will try to generate some operation and try to change the Kafka cluster status. So we have rebalance, which is just to rebalance the workload, and we have add broker, remove broker, delete broker. So add broker is like straightforward; just add broker and move some um, move some node to the newly added broker, and remove broker is to remove all the replica of the broker. So demote broker is a special thing. So demote broker is says you just move all the leader replica of the broker. So in case like, like the broker is, uh, is kind of slow and you want to mitigate, so you just move all the leader because the leader replica consumes more resource than follower replicas. So that's what demote broker do. And uh, we have, actually we have another one which is uh, fix offline replica. So this endpoint is relevant if you are running your Kafka cluster on Jboard disk. So basically what this means is that your one broker has multiple disks under nine. So let's say if one disk is died, you, do, you, you only want to move the 
replica hosted by the state disk to other place, but you do not want to move all the replica hosted by this broker to other place. So this fixed offline replica is specifically for that purpose. Oh, and we also have uh, recently, we also open sourced the UI for cruise control just to, for better user, just to be more friendly to our users so they can like uh, do operations in a uh, like fancy UI, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so the last one, the last component I, I want to talk about is the uh, anomaly detector. So anomaly detector is that, so it's uh, based on the cluster model generated by the load monitor and uh, also some raw metrics collected by load monitor. It uh, detects if there is adding anomaly. And uh, we define the four anomaly types here. The, so basically it's broker failure, disk failure, go violation, and uh, metric anomaly. So, if, uh, so I think, uh, uh, so I think the name is like kind of straightforward, but uh, there is a distinction between broker failure, disk failure, and uh, go violation and the metric anomaly. As you see, I see, I write uh, like a proactive mitigation here. So what is this proactive mitigation? So for the first uh, two types, broker failure and disk failure, if this, this kind of anomaly is detected, it basically means that something bad has already happened to the cluster and the cluster is in an unhealthy stage, an unhealthy state. And uh, so some, some, like some operation may, may need to be done immediately. But for go violation and the metric anomaly, it may mean that the bad thing does not happen, but is about to happen. So there is some like anomaly, right? Uh, like for example, a metric for one of the metric anomalies like uh, log flash time. So basically, there is like one broker's log flash time. Just uh, there is a sudden rise in the log flash time. It doesn't mean that this, this disk is died, but it means this disk might be slow. So it is like a uh, uh, the something bad is like maybe happen in the future. So if we if the user gets alerted by this kind of anomaly, they can take some preventive. Uh, like action, so this this is reason why I call this is a proactive mitigation. So uh, for all of this four anomaly type, so if any of this anomaly is detected, we have a plugboard component which is anomaly notifier. So basically, this component defines what is the action you want to take once you detect these anomalies. So in our current open source implementation we provide the self heating notifier and the Slack notifier. So self heating notifier is like, it, once the anomaly is detected, it will try to generate some operation and it will automatically trigger the operation just to um, bring the Kafka cluster status into a healthy status. And the Slack notifier is like, uh, once some anomaly is detected, it will send you some alert over a Slack channel. And uh, internally, we are actually using the email notifier. So basically, this email notifier is extended from the self-healing notifier. So in, so in addition to like uh, self-heal the cluster, it also sends some email to our like uh, SREs. So they get alerted like something is going on inside, the, uh, inside this Kafka cluster. And so this is not available in open source, but uh, it's like very easy to implement. So we don't open source because there's some like email address which is sensitive information. So we want to, don't want to expose, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to show you um, a demo. So um, originally I was planning to like show on a terminal, but uh, since I was running on a, one, one of our company's um, dev test cluster, so there is some sensitive information. So what I did is that I do, did, uh, I just run the demo last night and I just do a screen capture for the key steps. So in this way, we, I can give, we can give you a, like a, a direct taste of what cruise, cruise control can do and uh, what would we expect from it. Okay, so let's get started. So the first endpoint I want to show is like state endpoint. So what this state endpoint you see here is my command. So I use I just send the HTTP command to the cruise control, which is deployed at uh, and the local host. So I send the uh, state endpoint, and we, I want to query the executor, analyzer, and the monitor state. 
So what I get is that the executor state is in it is, the executor is running. So basically, it has uh, collected some data. So you have some like uh, window which is valid and some how many partitions valid. And basically, valid means that we have the sample for this partition in memory. And uh, the executor state shows that currently there is no task in progress. And uh, the analyzer state just shows the uh, what is the ready goals. So this the ready goals here means that this goals is ready for self healing. So if any of goal violations is detected by the long detector for this goals, it will like the, the some proper action will be taken. And uh, okay, so this is pretty much the state endpoint. And uh, actually, so here I do another one. I do a state endpoint with another state and uh, with verbose true. So basically, all of our endpoints has a verbose true option. Basically, if you turn by default, it is a false. But if you specify it as true, it will return you more information, the more detailed information uh, for each endpoint. So here, if I turn this verbose true, uh, Actually, what I want to show everyone is that you see that we have released all the goals here. So this is all the goals we currently support. And uh, it has some information here, like uh, required window, required partition percentage, re include all topics. So this is uh, this goes to requirement of data completeness. So if the, if the load monitor has enough data, which meets this requirement, then this goal will be ready for self healing. So just uh, show the status here. Okay, so the uh, next one I want to show is load endpoint. So what the load endpoint shows you is that it uh, returns you uh, for each broker in your Kafka cluster, what is their current load? So basically we have a load for the four resource we are interested in, basically it's disk, CPU, network in, and the uh, network out. And we also show you like the number of replicas and number of leader replica, which is uh, resides on this broker. So you see here in the last column, it is, uh, it is uh, like a number of leader replicas, the number of replicas, like number digits. So this is a uh, pretty much load endpoint. So um, also, also if you are running on if you're running your Kafka cluster on JBoard disk, we actually provide you another thing, which is a load endpoint, but you specify this populate disk info to true. If you set this parameter, basically what we return you is a detailed, uh, detailed information about the disk uh, of each broker. Basically, you see that besides what is returned in previous slide, it also lists all the disk for Let's say for this broker, 1473, it, it has, so this disk is used by Kafka. And uh, what is the utilization for each of the disk is here. And what is the number of uh, uh, leader replica and number of replica resides on each disk, it is also listed here. So it give, give you a very detailed view of the utilization of the disk. And I also want to point out that it is a, so currently in our open source, we have two branch. One is a master branch and one is a, a migrate to Kafka 2.0 branch. So master branch is used, to, is used for monitoring Kafka cluster running on Kafka version 011. And the, the 2.0 branch is for monitoring Kafka cluster running on Kafka version 2.0. Because the JBoard support is like added in Kafka 1.0, so this, this feature is only in the 2.0 branch. Okay, the third endpoint I want to show is the Kafka cluster status. Kafka cluster state. So what this, let um, me see I run the curl command here and I get a response. Let's look at what is returned here. So first it also returns the number of leader replica, number of replica for each broker. It also returns if there is any out of sync replica, basically meaning that there's some follow replica which is uh, far behind the leader replica, so it's out of sync. And if there is any offline replica, offline replica means that uh, maybe the disk is die or maybe the broker is die, so all the replica on this disk and the broker is go offline. And uh, we also shows you for each broker and we shows you 
let's say here is the broker 1473, which shows you all the online disk and all the offline disk information here. And uh, in the end, uh, as you can see, we show that for each of the partition, if there is any offline partition, if there is any partition with offline replica, if there is any under replicated partition and under mean SR partition. So basically, if there is any flawed partition here, so this can, like, if you see anything here, basically it means that some partition is not in a good state. So may, probably you want to do a rebalance or you want to like further investigate yourself, yeah. Okay, so the last end point I want to show is a proposal end point. Basically, proposal end point shows you what is the analyzer's proposal for current Kafka cluster status. So if you run this uh, proposal with no parameter, basically it gives you, um, it first shows you like what is the uh, proposal, gen it is like an overview of what is the proposal generated. So here it says we are proposing to run 121 inter-broker replica movements. And uh, the, number of, the, the number of bytes to like, move will be like over 1000 MB. And uh, there will be no, there will be zero intra broker replica movement, and uh, there will be one, one hundred sixty six leadership movement. So this is like an overview of what what is the proposal is, and how many data you expect to move, and uh, and the, the second part is shows that uh, so does this proposal satisfies the the goals or not? So you see here the rec awareness goal is it has a no action state. So what no action means that, uh, so this, before this proposal, the, mm, the, Kafka, the current Kafka cluster status already satisfied this goal, so no action is needed. And uh, this is a continue of the previous uh, like slide. So there is, for some goal, like the replica distribution goal, to say that it is fixed. So basically it means that uh, this code is originally violated, and this proposal will fix this code. And uh, there is some code is, uh, has a state of violated. Basically, it means that uh, we are, in this proposal, we are unable to like, fix this code. And because this is a soft code, so we don't say that we are unable to optimize the cluster. It is just like our best effort to try is unable to satisfy the code. And uh, uh, this is also like continue of previous slide. So this is, so in the response for the proposal endpoint, it also, in the end, it also shows you what is the optimized load. So after we apply this proposal, what do we expect our like cluster, Kafka cluster uh, load? So basically this is like the expectation here. Okay. So now I'm going to go through some like post endpoints. The first one I want to show you is the like, remove broker. Let's say, let's say you want to like uh, decommission a broker from your cluster, what you are going to do. So basically, if you are using cruise control, it's a one command line thing. So basically you just specify remove broker. You specify the broker ID you want to remove. So here we are removing 1473. And uh, we specify dry run as true, uh, as false. So basically, <clears throat> if you do not specify this parameter, it will not, uh, like this, this post endpoint will not really run. It will just uh, show you what will the cluster look like after the, this operation is run. So it's like a dry run. So uh, if, if you want to really run, you need to specify this parameter as false. And uh, we want to specify the concurrency Throttling, uh, throttle for concurrency, as I like described in the executor slide. So here we say that the concurrent partition movement per broker is 10, and the concurrent leader movement across cluster is 500. So, so after we like uh, send this, this command, then it shows, so the response is very similar to like proposal response. So it first give us an overview of what, we, what operation will be like, uh, Will be um, will be executed. How many data you expect to move, and uh, then it shows you like each of the goal it is uh, like satisfied or not, and uh, it shows you the after the like uh, execution is done, what will be the cluster looks like. So you see here actually 
if you see here that because this command we are trying to remove 1473 after the execution is done we expect to see that on broker 1473 there will be no leader no replica there will be no resource utilization for this broker and uh, so so this command actually really triggers the operation since the dry run is false uh, then then after we run that command and uh, then we check the uh, cruise control state and we check specifically we check the executor state we see that in the current executor state becomes inter-broker replica movement task in progress. Basically, it means that we are currently moving replicas uh, between the brokers. And it also shows you like uh, how many replica is pending, how many replica movement is pending, it is in progress, it is aborting, it is finished, and uh, total. So this gives you a sense of what is our current progress of like executing this, uh, this task. So let's wait for, and then here I wait for some time um, until the execution is done. Then I check the executor state again. It shows no task uh, in pro progress, basically shows that uh, it goes back to idle state. Then I, after that, I check the load endpoint, basically it shows us the, what is the current load for the cluster. And we can see that for broker 1473, there is no leader and the replica left on that broker. So basically it means that a uh, remove broker just do what we expected. Okay, so the last uh, post endpoint I want to show everyone is the re rebalance endpoint. Basically, it is it is like uh, uh, to rebalance the the load across the cluster. So the command line will be quite similar to remove brokers. So basically, the rebalance and the dry run set to false, and you set the throttle for execution, and it. It returns you uh, like a high overview of the operation, and it shows you every goal is like satisfied or not. It shows you the expect expectation after this execution is done, and uh, we see that if we if we run the rebalance, so previously we remove all the replica of one four seventy three, and after rebalance, the, there is some replica and some little replica is added back to this broker just to make the whole cluster as balanced. And after I, I run the rebalance, I also check for uh, executor state and it shows that uh, it is doing the replica movement here. And uh, later if I check, it shows me that it's doing the leader movement here. And uh, later I check it means that everything's done, go back to idle state. Then I check the current node. I see that uh, there is some replica and some leader replica move back to this broker. And the number is exactly at what I see in the expect, expectation place. So here is a 584 and a 1620. If we see the expectation um, return for the rebalance endpoint, it also is 584 and uh, 1620. So basically it means that um, the rebalance is successfully and uh, this estimation, this expectation is accurate. Okay, uh, okay. So the last the last thing is just for if you are running on Jboard again. So the rebalance the rebalance is actually can do a rebalance disk. So basically, you specify rebalance disk to true. So in, so if you set this parameter to true, and if your Kafka broker is running on Jboard disk, so what cruise control tries to do is that it will not try to um, balance the load between brokers. It will balance the load between the disks or within the same broker. So, if you can see in the response, it will, it will there will be no inter-broker replica movement, but there will be some intra-broker intra-broker replica movement. Basically, it's move. It is a replica movement between the disks of the same broker, and we are using a different set of goals. Basically, it's the intra-broker goals, and uh, in the expectation part, we also have the detailed information of the expected load of each disk of the of the broker after we like apply this um, proposal. So yeah, so this is um, pretty much what Cruise Control can do. Just give you a like a direct taste of what Cruise Control can do. So uh, also. Um, so here is like our open source repo. I basically want to show you something. 
So this is our repo. So basically, we are currently quite. Um, so basically, we see like the risk in popularity, <laughs> like there is a lot of like external. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, let me just uh, share the last screen. Just take. Okay. So I'm I'm just uh, sharing my our, our uh, open source repo. Okay. So um, this is our open source repo. So basically, we have seen our the the project itself has become like more and more popular. We see a lot of like external adopter of cruise control to management their uh, their Kafka clusters, and uh, which has we we know that there are a lot of like big company in Bay Area that yeah we are not going to specify their names, but there is some other companies using our system, and uh, we are act we are. Actually, we are very actively develop a, a new feature and doing a bug fix. We are like have a, a new release almost like uh, every week. If you if you click on the release part, you can see we have the all the a lot of release like uh, very recently. And uh, actually, we every time we release, we release um, the version for two branch. Our master branch is like start with zero, so zero four eighteen is our forty eight is our latest uh, master branch released and it is used for uh, monitoring Kafka cluster running Kafka 11. And uh, if you are running Kafka 2.0, you should use the um, 2.0 branch release, basically this 2.0.45. And for each of the releases, we have uh, like a, a, a document about what is a new feature added, what is the bug fix, all, all the stuff. So if, I, if, I, if you if you are um, if you are interested in using cruise control, just uh, give it a try. Just uh, use the latest release and give it a try. So the way to set up is quite simple. So we have a quick start here. So basically, you can you can start cruise control in five minutes, like seriously. So <laughs> it's not that complex. Yeah. Um, yeah. This and also, and also we have the wiki basically for all the REST API. What they are is what is, there is a detailed description of what the each of the endpoint is able to do what is the parameters for this endpoints, and how you can use it. Use the UUID and use the cookies. So there is a detailed description here. So if you if you are if you are going to use it, you'd better look at this page. Okay, um, let me go back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, we are very active on the Gitter channel. So if you have any question, just ask us in the Gitter channel. So we probably will reply you within the same day. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, that's pretty much what I have today. So oh, we always have the UI. So yeah, give it a try. OK. Uh, hello. Uh, hi, uh, Quinn. Thanks mm -hmm. for the great talk. So uh, I see there are quite a lot of questions. Uh, have you? OK. Yeah, yeah, I can go through the questions. OK. okay. Is, uh, in Q&A, OK. Will slide be available after the event? Sure, I can. I can like uh, publish. Yeah, you the, can. The uh, yeah, you can send me the slides. Uh, we will share to uh, our central place, so I can send a link to the attendees. Okay. So the next one is uh, how is Kafka being used for database replication? So basically, I think the usage for Kafka for database replication is that you just use Kafka as a uh, as a pipe to uh, pass the the what is that the CDC logs basically is the the data change logs so that's in that way you can because if you, because the what Kafka provides you is the order the uh, stream of record right if you can if you, if you can like uh, serialize your like uh, data change into a ordered record you send to Kafka then 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 your like uh, your database replica in another column just to consume this stream of like data change, and it applies each of the changes in order, right? So basically, your uh, your your data replica in other colors will be in the in sync state with your like uh, data replica um, color, um, data center. Yeah. The second one is that we can we use cruise control for stand and non setup. Uh, well, I'm not sure what is the. Uh, Standard non setup. Um, so basically, the 
the cruise, the usage typical usage for cruise control is that you you have one cruise control instance for one um, Kafka cluster. So cruise control is not like a distributed. It's, it's not distributed itself. It only have one instance. So I'm not sure is this the standard non means. Basically, you need the first you need a Kafka cluster, right? Then then that is the meaning for cruise control. Then you have a cruise control monitoring this Kafka cluster, and you need to only need one Java process for cruise control and uh, just running somewhere and uh, able to talk to the Kafka cluster. That's the prerequisite, I think. Okay. Compare Kafka with uh, zero message queue. What are the pros and the cron? Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure about the zero message queue, so I may not answer this question properly. Yeah. And how does this? Uh, does this live have a voice? Uh, I think this is a, not a, a irrelevant question here, right? And the next one is remove broker, remove disk if it's a destructive post operation. Is there some kind of two phase commit protocol building cruise control? So if things do not go in the right. Oh, okay. Actually, we have this. So I was not putting these slides, but basically, we have a two way verification. Um, which is like uh, a new feature we just added recently. So basically what it does is that they say, if you are like afraid of some fat finger thing, so you can first uh, send a request, uh, but uh, uh, so first you need to turn on one config, which is like a two way verification. If this config is turned on, and uh, you then the first time you send this request, uh, it will not uh, get executed, but it will return you a review ID. So, and uh, there will be a review board available to you. So basically, we, we expect that someone else will, okay. And we expect that someone else will go to this review board and uh, mm, go to this review board and uh, just review your operation. If it seems looks good, he will give you uh, like a proof. Then, you, then the next time you, you send the same request, then you can like trigger the execution. So this can give you a second consideration of uh, is this operation okay or not. And uh, even, and uh, there is another thing. So even if this operation is already like in execution, you, there is another endpoint called stop execution. Basically it can stop the ongoing execution. So if you feel like the current execution will ruin your cluster, so you can like stop it anytime. So yeah, so that's, I think that's an that's a answer for this question. So the next one is the uh, the CDC capture. Is there any specific tech being used uh, for log reading capture? Yes. So I think this question is out of scope of my knowledge. So I was unable to answer this one uh, for the CDC capture one. The another one is what is the overall experience data loss on Kafka possible to ensure zero data loss? Yeah, I think uh, for the data loss, thing, it uh, it really depends on your your uh, repli replication settings, right? If you set more replication, basically you have a stronger guarantee of the data and guarantee of no data loss. But I think that but that will also like uh, have some bad effect. Basically, it it consume more resource and uh, basically it will like affect the uh, latency and throughput because there will be more follower fetching from leader. So I think that's a, uh, yeah, I think that's a, that's a concern. And also um, in Kafka, the, we are, actually we are provide at least once like delivery. So basically if you turn, if you have the, um, if you have more than one like replica and uh, if you turn on, if I have more, more than one replication, basically, cruise control, uh, basically Kafka can guarantee you that there is no data loss, but uh, you need to do the duplication yourself in your application. And the next one is uh, new to Kafka, how do you compare Zookeeper to cruise control? So, so I think they are totally, uh, they are two systems for totally different purposes. So Zookeeper is used for the metadata storage for Kafka, basically, you store the like the cluster information on Zookeeper. Cruise Control is a is a system that uh, 
monitoring the Kafka and uh, if there is anything goes wrong, self heal the Kafka cluster state. So basically they are serving two totally different purpose. And the last one is, can you talk about Kafka receiving IBM CDC? So yeah, so this question is also out of my knowledge scope. So yeah, I was unable to answer here, yeah. Okay. Uh, hi, Quinn. There are a few questions on the chat window. Uh, okay. Do you want to quickly go over it to take a look? Sure. Let's see. Are we starting to notice? I think some of them are already answered. Okay, so what are the size of uh, messages? Uh, okay, so I was think, I, I think you are talking about the uh, the message with the, the message that is reported by the um, by the matrix reporter. So the message so the message reported by the matrix reporter to the internal matrix topic is, is very is small. It's like uh, uh, several k bytes, so it's not not large. Yeah, so it's not a huge. So this is a, so this is not a huge overload uh, for to your uh, Kafka cluster. So in our like uh, own production environment, we we see that this two topic, which is used by cruise control, this add a very very small over a very small load to the to our own Kafka cluster. So, yeah. Database replication. I think uh, this is talked and is it possible to dynamic add a reporter into a running broker? Yes. Uh, so this is, uh, <laughs> yeah, so far it's, it's not. So you need to, like, basically you need to add the grid dependency for, like, matrix reporter. And you need to, after that, you need to, like, reboot your. Uh, Kafka broker, so that the the reporter will work. And uh, it's cruise control to along with UI free to use. Yes, it is free to use. Yeah. And destructive. Can you give a quick what you needed to install? What is the components guest? Okay, uh, I think there are some question about how to uh, how to like. Uh, Oh, okay, and um, so you so basically there is question of how to like quick start. So I will I basically we can go over the like quick start uh, together. So I can show you like guys what is the uh, uh, to what is the steps to start use cruise control. So um, for the previous question about the for commercial use, actually we are under BSD two clouds license, so it is like okay for like commercial use. Like uh, yeah. Mm, okay, and uh, yeah, so okay, so here's a quick start. So basically, um, get cruise control. So we suggest that you, okay, so let me, sh let me change to the quick start part. This, mm -hmm. Oh no, this is not the right one. Share screen. Where's my okay, so let's 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 look at the quick start together. So basically it's first step is to get cruise control. So we suggest that you 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 get one of the released version from this release. So the first thing will be download one of the like zip from here. Then after that, um after you like unzip and you you basically can, so un, under your under your Kafka side, you need to change, what you need to change is that if you need to, uh, I think under the Kafka's Gradle build, you need to add the, okay. Uh, you can use, the, you can just add it in the, in the, if you, in your Kafka um, project, you, there is a Gradle file that you need to add the dependency of the matrix reporter from from there. The next thing is that you just run your cruise control thing. Yeah, I think it's quite straightforward if you like to follow this. Yeah, 
there, there's a lot of some details at, because I don't run it now. I don't, I'm not like very clear. But I think this is, uh, I, I see like our adopters is following this and there is no, there used to be some issue and we all addressed that and now it's, it's good. So just follow this quick start. So yeah, and if you have like a further question, please go to the Jitter channel, Jitter channel and uh, we, and all of our core developers is like very active there and we can answer all your questions. For if you have any issue with like start, starting using the cruise control, you are not able to like uh, start. Yeah, and uh, also another option is that you can directly use the UI so you do not need to like deploy the cruise control. The UI will deploy your cruise control backend for you automatically, yeah. Okay, let me go back to the uh, to here. Uh, I, I think we are over time. Uh, maybe okay. you can just to quickly take a look uh, for tackle uh, the last question, if any. Sure. Yeah. Let me go to the chat. Let me see. So the last one will be was. So can I use cruise control for, can I use cruise control for non-cluster data? Um, yeah, I think for cruise control to uh, monitoring a Kafka cluster, a Kafka cluster, you at least need to have a Kafka cluster of at least a two broker. I think that's the minimal requirement because it's, if it's only one broker, that broker died, you can't do nothing, right? <laughs> basically, you, 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 are, you are died, right? You're, 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 you're screwed up. So basically, if you have at least two brokers in your cluster, you can use cruise control to help you to do the management and the operations, yeah. Okay, okay. I think, yeah. Okay, uh, great. Well, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I, uh, we are uh, 10 minutes over time. Uh, I, I think that's uh, for today's talk. Uh, thanks a lot, Quinn, for the great presentation. Um, if you guys have uh, 